Good evening everyone and uh, as most of you know by now the results from the Watergrass Hill referendum were out late last night and um, you know the result was phenomenal but it was expected at over 96%. The turnout was poor, um, 357 out of a possible 1100 voters turned out to vote on a very very important issue you know and um, I would have expected a much higher turnout but um, still in all it was good it ruffled the feathers of McBarry and uh, from the Solidarity Party and Tommy Gould from Sinn Féin um, Watergrass Hill of course is in their constituency so it was absolutely fantastic um, I, I don't know how many foreigners voted in it personally myself you know I don't think foreigners should be voting in these type of things especially in kind of referendums that could change the natural course of um, of Ireland you know so I, I would be against that um, yeah but anyway still look over 96% and you know it would be great I think um, even in retrospect even if towns and villages who've already had these um, installations put in these bypass installations they should now do the same thing just to show the government well you know you lied about us wanting this and now we're going to prove it by having our own referendum but look I suppose the lower turnout is very indicative of, of the Irish mindset you know a lot of people are still afraid of the of the racist world and being called you know and in AZI and fascist and all this kind of thing you know um, we're, we're going to have to get over that um, we're going to have to try and punch through this because these words have been very effective in keeping the Irish people subdued for many many years now a couple of decades in fact and uh, we need to try and get over that lads because you know you, you can't let the use of words and name calling be the means by which your country is stolen from you um, so look you know and I, I suppose okay it was just a local referendum it wasn't official and all that but look you know there are no excuses why you shouldn't have or why you couldn't come out to vote you know you were busy okay well it was open for 12 hours or you had a hangover well you know it was open for 12 hours you could have came out any point of the evening or, or even up to 10 o'clock in the night um, I'm afraid of being called racist I didn't want to be seen going in there bullshit like the, this is your future your kids future your grandkids future and like I said the natural direction of the future of Ireland will be changed by these these centres and just mass immigration in general you know but look you know I suppose the government have been watching other elections and they do notice trends they have everything all noted and calculated the whole lot and they, they do know that the turnout is not great in any elections you know even the last election I'm sure was at 48 percent and the government are banking on this let me tell you that right because the government stacked the last election in their favor by you know basic basically siding off on on tens if not hundreds of thousands of migrants of all types from you know asylum seeker to migrant worker whatever you know to basically re get registered and vote for them okay and we had a kind of a low turnout right so the next election what we need to be doing is we need everyone as part of your national responsibility your responsibility to your to your nation to your land is to get registered and get out and vote you know no it could be another thing and I was thinking about this today it could be a thing that okay maybe the amount of people that actually came out and voted was high the government are saying that it was low I am saying that there is election rigging going on of course there is I'm not I'm not afraid to say it but I'm not saying in this particular instance this is what happened but it would not be beyond the government's um, ability to do this yes they would 
they would say, well, it was a low turnout, and that's why, you know, the national side or the Irish side or the native side lost the vote and somehow disappeared the rest of the votes. Who knows? I'm only just saying, that's all, you know. It could be a possibility, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But look, um, so I think I think Watergrass Hill is, is a good kind of a microcosm of where the country is. The vast, vast, vast majority of Irish people and indeed some foreigners do not want this. I think there was 10 people voted for it. I wonder, it would be interesting to see their, their ethnic background. Now they could have been just total lefties as well, you know, but there you go. And that just proves that they're also a tiny minority but a very vocal and a very well-funded minority with the backing of the state, the media and just, the, you know, you know, they they are they don't get the amount of grief that people on our side get, you know. So um I suppose that's it. I suppose that's all I wanted to say. Well done and I hope that this type of you know a direct democracy or this type of referendum is mirrored throughout the country. Yes, there's a bit of work involved, you wanna have to get up off your hole and you know, actually do something go door to door with leaflets and all that and just have your own referendum. You could have it in, we say, an, an area in the city. You could have it in a, a couple of different areas in a town. You could have it in a village. It's all it's up to yourself how you do it. But I, I would be very cautious in allowing, you know, everyone there the chance to vote. I think, you know, ideally you should be born in Ireland. You know, you should be born in Ireland. And I, I tell you why, right? I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example here, right? Look at Liston Varna. Back in 2016, Marcus White, a hotel owner, decided he was going to start taking in asylum seekers, right? And there was a meeting in the local community hall. And to the best of my knowledge, and fair play to Garold Murphy for being there that night. And, you know, um, I suppose making an account of that night, 97% of the people from Liston Varna said no to this. They did not want it, okay? No, today, those same people are now in the minority of um, three to one. They're, they're about one third of the population. So if they had this referendum today, they would lose. If they gave the vote to um, all the asylum seekers and all the Ukrainians that came to the village since 2016, they would lose. So it's not prudent. I mean, the destiny of Ireland must be decided by the native Irish. And anyone living here from abroad, you know, you either like it or you lump it. And that is it. So I would be very, very careful going forward. Any more of these referendums needs to be in the hands of the native Irish. In fact, everything in this country needs to be in, in the hands of the native Irish and it should be their decision on how this country gets run should be down to them and that should be final. And that's just my point of view. Okay, everyone, that's just um, a little ramble there about Watergrass Hill. Um, onwards and upwards to the next event. God bless. Talk to you all soon.